Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Hello, everybody. The little button says we're live. Let us know how the audio is. We can take turns introducing ourselves. I'm Wes. Who's next? I'm Clay. <laughs> and, people. and Jaron, who are you in the middle? Explain I'm, yourself. Uh, I am Jaron. I, uh, I, uh, you may have listened a couple weeks ago, Wes, on Star Trek Stories. Um, yeah, I do my own little Star Trek podcast. We get guests on. We talk about episodes of Star Trek. We don't watch it concurrently or like um, all in a row, like all Voyager, all at Deep Space Nine. We jump around. We look at the episodes more on an individual basis. So, yeah. Smart. It's, it's called Star Trek Stories. Star Trek Stories. Let us know, people out there. Hello, everybody. John Bradbury, Matt Ross, JD. Anyone else out there? Yum, yum. Let us know how the audio sounds. I toggled the audio adjustment, but I don't know if it's going to do it. So let us know if anything sounds crazy. How's everybody been? Clay, how have you been? Oh, I'm good. I'm ready for tonight's discussion. I've got I'm my... I'm hard man. Sorry. He's calling me soft. I have to go fuck this guy up. <laughs> you soft <laughs> bitch. Let's get some uh, rhyme and ale going here. Okay. Right. Talking about discovery. I'm ready to go now. How's that? Is that better for people? That's I'm much a little better. low. Yep. Is, is that better? Okay. Yep. What does the button do on StreamYard? What am I paying for? <laughs> I paid I paid 200 American dollars for this annual goddamn piece of shit. <laughs> uh, Matt Graham, welcome. Stephen Ross, it's been a while. Yum, yum. That's better. Okay, let me know. I can I can adjust in the background as we go. So, this is a tough trick. The reason, <laughs> the reason we're all here, thank you all for joining us for this very special podcast. As you saw from the thumbnail in my clever little title, uh, this podcast is officially taking a break from Star Trek Voyager. <laughs> Did we want to talk about that first? We're going to be, I mean, to, to, to just spread out the, the news, it's like we're going to take a break from Voyager, which we can get into. If people have questions, they can talk about it. We're going to cover Discovery's f season five, which is coming out shockingly soon in a couple of days. And we're going to be covering that on Patreon. So if you want the Discovery finale, the final season, you have to join us at patreon.com slash the Penske file to listen to the whole episode. It's kind of like what we did with Picard, which is what uh, behind the scenes we've been trying to remember what we did. But I think that's what we did. I think we covered it on Patreon. Strange New Worlds was also there, stuff like that. So we're going to be going back to that. Not TNG again, Matt Graham, unfortunately. So, Clay, do you have any thoughts about this uh, change of direction for better or for worse? Um <clears throat> We I'm discussed looking, this on Discord. We did, length, yeah. We yeah. kind of had a bit of a... We, we took a couple weeks off from recording, and the consensus when we got back was... Took a month off. A month, yeah, we, a month we, off. We, yeah. we went a couple weeks, and we were like, this feels so nice. Let's let's take another couple weeks off, and we did. Took a month and off. And when we reconvened, we I think we both independently were like, do we really have to go back to this? <laughs> <laughs> which, which uh, uh, let, me, let me be clear. Voyager is fine. And the problem is... We're four, four and a half seasons or four, yeah, three and a half seasons. Uh, three and a, yeah, three, we're three in season half. four, so three and a half. Three and a half. We're, we're dead in the middle of this show, and it's three and a half seasons of it's fine. And it's just not really lighting a fire for better or worse at this point to talk yeah. about. And I'm sure people have probably noticed that, that we uh, kind of don't really have a lot to say. Yeah, um, some comments, some comments, uh, either hint or outright say <clears throat> such a thing, which yeah. I can't disagree with. And you know, I, we were kind of saying it's funny. I, I actually said we were talking. It's like, man, it's. I wish there was a new show coming out that we could jump on. And then <laughs> Wes was like, "Oh, actually, Discovery starts in three days." <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, "All right, well, let's, let's do it. Let's because you know, for better That's or worse, going back, change it up a little bit." That's what Voyage has driven us to. It's driven us to my least favorite Star Trek show to return to. But I think it's appropriate being the final season. And the yeah. reason that we're gonna that Jaron is here today is because we can talk about the fourth. We're not actually gonna watch the fourth. No, no, that no. Was, <laughs> God forbid. That was the plan until we realized that Discovery is starting in a couple of days. We're like, oh, maybe we can bang out the fourth season. But no, that's not happening. And I'm not gonna do watch twelve episodes or whatever of Discovery in a couple of days. Um so we're here to talk about that as well. So that's that's the main thing. Because we don't want to do any work. So no. We're, no. we're bringing I, somebody else on to do the work for us. <laughs> I mean, just to, just to catch up before getting into uh, Discovery and stuff like that, just to sort of like the housekeeping of this is, so we're taking a break from Voyager. 
The thing will be on Patreon if people are interested in listening to our coverage of season five of Discovery. Um, video for the podcast is also going away at this point because um, we always flip flop on this. We've gone back and forth a bunch of times. I think that the podcast is best served by ignoring the video function, uh, mostly because the editing adds 10 times the amount of work that I have to do and it kills me. Um, and honestly, like before we took this break, I was on the verge of just shutting down the podcast because I was so tired of all the editing and just doing everything. And, and Voyager was also killing me. And so I think we have to get rid of the video. We'll go to audio, which results in a better sounding podcast. And it takes the work out of my hands that I have to do. Um, it'll still upload to YouTube as like a static image thing if people want to watch it there. Um, the other thing, I was reading some podcast newsletter that I came out, did a study, and this finds that like 80% of the people who listen to podcasts on YouTube just minimize the screen anyway. So it's yeah. like, why why do anything uh, with it? Um, people just listen to podcasts via whatever mechanism is easiest at the time. So if you're on your computer, YouTube is very easy to find things. Um, mm -hmm. And then you minimize it. If you're on your phone, you listen to a podcast. We'll go to audio only. Um, still do streams every once in a while. Let me know if I'm missing any comments too. I'm not really... Return the show. Sorry. Miss pretty faces. That's fine. What about the bat? The bat is a casualty of this whole thing. If another a wildlife creature were to come into the room, you'd have only highlight. <laughs> highlight of, of Voyager. Was that Voyager? It was, was that Voyager. Voyager. I think Voyager? it was Voyager. Highlight of Voyager was the bat episode, I think. Uh that's the only change. And then we'll come back to Voyager at some point in the future, I would think. But we'll probably do a little bit of modern trek in the meantime just to get a palate cleanse and to move on from there. So that'll be the change. And finally, I'm... oh, go ahead. Continue. Well, the final point about it is that um, not that this is everything, but it is sort of everything in terms of work is that the Patreon has also been getting hit pretty hard, which is the reason to do new stuff that people have been asking for on Patreon that we can't really cover. And we were getting dangerously close to our original goal of once it drops below a certain amount, we no longer do all of Voyager. And so that was potentially going to happen next month if the rates of atrophy continued on the Patreon. Obviously, money isn't everything, but at a certain point when you're doing all this work for like $3 an hour, it becomes much less desirable to do it for that little money. So um, does that not put us in a weird catch-22 where we've stopped doing Voyager to do something exclusively on Patreon that might put us back over the Voyager bar? It is. Which means we have to do Voyager again. I, I, see, I see it as a, I see it as the proof <clears throat> is in the pudding of do people really want Voyager? Do they want the other things? I sure. Think. Because, because sure. I guess the, the, the thing about the Patreon is that the declining of the Patreon kind of flies in the face of the logic of a lot of people were very excited to get to Voyager. So I don't know how to square the circle there, whether it's yeah. like just the idea of Voyager was more enticing than actually watching all of Voyager is for everybody. And, or is it just Same that with they the were creation of the show? I think too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> were they just, or are people just tired of us talking about Voyager, which is also potentially something that could be happening yeah so that's it those are the things no video on the podcast anymore it's going to be audio only voyage is taking a hiatus covering discovery season five on the patreon join the patreon if you want to support that and listen to everything yum yum says i want voyager but i do like your misery with modern <laughs> track why do you want voyager <laughs> man i question. you know all i gotta say is just listen to the deadwood podcast which we were doing i think concurrently or maybe instead i can't remember where it fell in void but basically it, it was point concurrent was, with voyager yeah when we covered deadwood i think the first episode was basically us going like is this what good television is like i forgot what good television was like it's basically just being effusive of, of deadwood for for three the, seasons the deadwood we... podcast is a fractional listen listenership of the voyager stuff but it's still it's it's it is it was us just sort of being like these characters are saying things that I can't quite <laughs> can't quite understand what they're talking about. It's, it's shocking. <laughs> Everyone on Voyager tells me exactly how they feel. Uh, what goes on the main feed on Tuesdays? Good question, Stephen. It'll be a little clip like we did with Picard. It'll be like a two to three minute clip of what the Patreon episode is for Discovery, reminding people to go to Patreon. Um, any chance to cover the X Files? Unlikely. Unlikely. I'm always open to it, but <clears throat> I would uh, to do the whole series. Oh no, 
No, yeah, never. Yeah, I think that's. I that's... I just started watching that for the first time like a year or so ago. Um, I, like all I, the episodes. Yeah, I'm in season three. I haven't watched it in a second, to be honest. But I'm wondering if, on some level, you had to be there to really appreciate, like at the time, to really mm. appreciate it. There are definitely episodes. I'm like, hmm. And then there's just a lot of okay. I don't know if I'm just ruined by modern genre TV. Um, yeah now it's a it's real hit and miss for the first few seasons the first season specifically sp especially is very rough um it picks up a bit in season two but it's it's you know like all these shows for whatever reason it takes them three seasons to really figure out what's going on you know you yeah. have your high points but mm -hmm. um things start to get uh but i think you're probably not wrong i think there was a sensation of the time um it's, it's x files is an interesting watch now because I think they keep talking about rebooting it and stuff. And I don't know where that falls because the culture has shifted so much as far as how conspiracy theories and government stuff like is viewed. Mm. Yeah. It's a you little bit dated and it's uh it's opinions of things. So. <clears throat> oh yeah. W w listening to it now, it almost sounds like a paranoid, like with all the conspiracy talk that happens. And now that we live in such an age of, internet conspiracies all over the place i'm like i wonder if this hits a lot different because this yeah. kind of has, sounds half unhinged half the time yeah the um the, <laughs> no. when, they, when they brought it back a handful of years ago uh one of the new characters was was joel McHale playing like an alex jones type and he ended up being right about stuff in the show and i was like ooh, i don't think we can do this anymore <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's uh the taste or the the decision sometimes goes the other way the the um the right the wrong of situations goes the other way um depends on who's writing them i really want to see we would i would do strange new world season two as yeah, well I, that'll be after i'm actually about halfway through that on my own i what i'm going to be really interested in is i've been enjoying strange new world and lower decks a lot more since we haven't been covering them because I, yeah. I haven't been quite as analytical with them as yes. I would be otherwise. Yep. So I'm curious to see where I land on discovery. Obviously we are going to be reviewing it, but uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see how, if my, uh, my, if I, if I let strange new world slide, cause we're not covering it on things that I, I, I'd uh, go after discovery for. No. And I'm, I'm aware that um, people <clears throat> on YouTube, bitching about it being work is kind of monotonous and I'm trying to avoid not making it sound like that, but it's, there's a, like a, there, it was interesting during the break where I just would watch something or listen to something or play something or read something. And it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like Instagram brain. Like when you, when you had Instagram or when I had Instagram, I would always look at a photo of like the kids or something and be like, how can I turn this into an Instagram thing, right? Like yeah. your, your reality is shaped through the social media. And when you're not having to podcast, I was sitting there going, I don't have to actually think a fucking thing about this. I can, I can just watch it and yeah. I can just like sit there and read the book and enjoy it and be like, well, I like that. I don't have to think any more about what it, what is, what it is than what, it, uh, than what that is, which is a nice, it was a nice break, but we'll have to get back into the critical analysis for modern Star Trek, I think, which won't be particularly difficult. Um, Post shows, would they be on the Patreon? No, I'd put the post show. It'll go on YouTube. It'll be a podcast on YouTube, like a little post show. If we, if we do that, maybe we don't. Um, Because that's the other thing we were talking about is if we change up the format of the podcast, which we haven't really decided about at this point. But let's get into Discovery Season 4. What okay. happened? So, Jaren, <laughs> do you want to explain? I, I understand that there was a there was a cloud or there was something that came that came along that that um, about that about wraps it up no so here, here's the thing i know <laughs> oh about boy, season four no, no I, I i just there's there is more to it than that there's the thing that i'll tell you the things i know about season four and you can tell me whether or not this makes sense okay i know that tilly leaves the show somewhat surprisingly y yes yes like, more, like more she, or less yes okay but i, know she, I believe she is back for season five so it's a soft Exit. Soft exit. She leaves early in the season or something, kind of surprisingly, and doesn't come back. Halfway through. She does come back in the final episode. Okay. Um, so it's a soft exit, but yes. She leaves the ship. She does do that. 
I understand she had a scene where she was running and there was a lot of doubt on the internet as to whether a woman of her stature could, <laughs> could oh, run boy. the distance that was being run. Um, I th the only People other thing don't I know think what is, football players do. Come on. I, I, what is it about that scene? Is, is it like she's running from like a like that? They're being chased by a gi giant space monster that, frankly, no one could outrun. Okay. Um, okay. And so they're they're all they're all running for like a half. They're hour all just kind of like video. jogging yeah. as like CG is chasing them and <laughs> get to the top of that hill. It can't get us there, and it, and of course it doesn't. So. <laughs> and the only other thing is apparently it's a cloud monster, or something like that. It's some sort of AI monster or something like that, or, or it's a, maybe I might be off. I, I I think it's ethereal if I'm understanding it. Correctly. Oh, great. Ethereal is right. Um, um, Does it learn to love at the end of the season? Uh, uh, That's a yes. <laughs> yes and no. Yeah. <laughs> yes and no. That's fucking show. So, well, I mean, there, okay. Um, I'm going to say season four is definitely an improvement over what season three was. Um, okay. It's not the best season they've done. There was enough interesting stuff happening in this season. I'm like, okay, this is fairly interesting. What some of this is. And are you it, talking about plot or are you talking about character work or are you talking about something else? Uh, both like certainly not in all aspects. Um, this is probably, so it, it's another big season mystery box, uh, save the, save the world, save the universe kind of a thing. But this is probably the most interesting one they've done. And the one that I'm like, okay, I see I, this one. I can get behind the execution that can be a separate conversation, but at least in terms of what this is trying to be. Um, I definitely applaud what it's doing. Like it's the burn was incredibly stupid. Um, was that season three? That was that was yeah, season, season three. three. Um, the Red Angel. I know a lot of people uh, will say season two is the best, and I would begrudgingly agree. But if we're being honest, the Red not Angel be, is not also. because of the Red Angel. No, no. <laughs> the Klingon War. At least they get into messy politics again. We can talk about the execution, but um. So the first half is definitely like there is there's like two separate mysteries in a, in a sense where first there is like a cloud anomaly thing um that is is blowing up entire planets is sure. how the whole thing right. starts um they call it the dma a uh, dark matter anomaly mm -hmm. um and the kind of big notable thing is you guys saw season three yeah, um, yes. but not for not for we okay. were shocked we only missed one season to discovery it feels yes. like i haven't watched discovery in six years but apparently i've only missed season four yeah, I, you you will probably be mostly okay. There's just mostly some like little details probably from going between these seasons. Um, the big thing to note is uh, the character of Book, if you remember, which is Burnham's um, lover boyfriend. and yeah, yeah. boyfriend. Mm -hmm. um, it's his planet that gets destroyed in the beginning. Oh, Quajon, okay. and he loses like uh, family. He loses everything. Like he's one of the only members of his species left. His planet was the one from season three, if I'm remembering correctly. It was Jonathan Frakes' living room. <laughs> was his planet where they had like the zebra striped couches or something like that. Yeah, um, they can all. They're all connect. It's kind of also it's like, like butterflies. Um, yeah, it's also what is it? Avatar, where everything's kind of all connected. Oh, like sure, nature's yeah. all kind of connected, and like. <clears throat> Um, yeah, because so, book can talk to animals. I'm sorry for people who are like very familiar with Discovery, but it's all coming back to me. Book can talk to animals, right? That's his like special power. Yeah, it's why he now can. Because at the end of season three, they realize he can also use the spore drive, and so Stamets doesn't have to anymore. So oh, they I don't can, remember that at all. No, yeah, no, I don't remember. <laughs> he can kind of like talk to the the spore the, the spores the mushrooms the mycelia. Oh, so. oh sure, interesting. why not? Okay. Uh, so Stamets can get all his kind of like augmentation removed and book can be mostly doing it well, that's, a, that's a shame they spent so much time developing stamets's internal conflict about using the spore <laughs> the spore drive it's a shame so, that they just flushed that storyline away is the spore drive one of the worst star trek creations or is it or is it just the way that they ended up using it was I like technology I, wise you mean like a, a technology plot development yeah i mean like 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 a creative choice like I, a, I oh, great it's, more, choice. it's more the latter, I think. Um, because I feel it, like it just it's just trouble. 
I think it's by far the worst technology that's ever been invented on the show. I, I could probably come up with other specific storylines that were terrible. Like, I think that, like, in terms of narrative, like, the way that they had to handle Dukat in the last 10 episodes of DS9 is Fair. pretty awful in terms of Fair. storytelling. But it's definitely the worst technology that they've developed, which ties into the story. So. Well, it's it's magic. Um, yeah. I think the idea of a, a Star Trek show where a ship can literally go anywhere for a second in the first season of Discovery, I was like, are they going to turn this into like a multiverse dimensional hopping Star Trek? That could be interesting, but kind of like sliders in Star Trek, sliders right? like they or just something can't get like, home or something. But every, every, yeah. like every universe is just a slight variation of the, tri- the triple yeah. episode from Deep Space Nine. Right, exactly. That, that would be kind of. It's like the Tribbles get replaced by the Klingons, and the Klingons are just like duplicating themselves all over. It's like it's a lot of Klingons. It would be a fun episode. <laughs> they don't, but it, at, at this point, the the spore drive is a complete afterthought. It's like it literally just gets them to where they need. It might as well just be warp drive for the most part. Like it can't actually even take them any everywhere. They. Uh, they have to at one point leave the galaxy, and so there's a whole episode centered around the galactic barrier from the the original series. Mm. But for whatever reason, the spore drive that can literally take them to different universes um, and like times, they're like, well, but the negative energy field at the edge of the galaxy, we can't use the spore drive, so we have to manually fly through. I'm like, wait a minute, so this thing can't actually go? No, and everywhere. <laughs> I have a little respect for that only because you got to put, I guess you got to put limits on something. Otherwise it's just ridiculous, but it's not, it's, it's not already ridiculous, but it's the kind of limit where it's like the ep, that episode needs to yes. be a limit. And then yeah. there's, and then that limit's completely forgotten for, <laughs> again for, yeah, of course. Well, I, I think it's, it, I think it's kind of interesting to me. If someone said list five things about Star Trek discovery, I don't know if the spore drive would make it into my five which is kind of interesting considering of how bizarre of a like advancement it is for the show. It, it's one of those shows that it never, it can, it's kind of like Voyager. It, like it had this idea, but it doesn't really particularly care about the idea. If, as as far as my memory goes, the, the coolest thing that I remember the sport drive doing might've been in season one where it's the first time they fight with it and they use it constantly to like avoid torpedoes oh, and sure. stuff. Like they're just yeah. kind of like hopping around, which is fine. But it, after that, they, they didn't really do anything. Tom Hickey says, a lot of people say four is better than three. I say it gets worse every season. They dug their heels into what Star Trek should be. So and my Ross question. is impressed that Jaren remembers all this. <laughs> <laughs> I literally just finished watching it, but I started around Christmas and ended a few days ago. So okay. <laughs> it's it, fresh. it took me a few months to get through it. And they say Stamets still is the, uh, the spore driver for season four, I suppose. So maybe he... He chooses he, to go back. Yeah, they. it's weird because at, at the end of season three, it's like, oh, you don't have to use it anymore. And then he's basically the only guy using it again in season four. So the show is all over the place with itself. Sure. Yeah. Uh, my question is, what is the status of the Federation in season four? Is it just business as usual? So when they pick up from the end of season three, like Discovery has been on a mission and like where they're now kind of trying to distribute dilithium to all like the member oh, planet. That's right. Yeah, and yeah. then to all of the kind of neighboring planets. So actually, the Federation's a, a little stronger at this point because people are starting to rejoin. Um, like Earth has been because cons- Earth is not a member of the Federation, and they have been considering rejoining. Um, so it's in a place where like the Federation is definitely in a stronger place than it was. The reason why Tilly leaves is that they are restarting Starfleet Academy for the first time in decades, mm-hmm. and she goes off to go do that. Um, uh, I think Navarre, which is Vulcan, is hasn't been a member, but now is kind of getting more friendly with the Federation. So yeah, they're in a definitely in a stronger place when season four starts. Okay, Burnham's a captain at the start of season four. When does Burnham become captain? At the very end of season three, Burnham gets promoted, and I'll say the biggest single improvement. It definitely does not fix all the issues. Is uh the biggest single. Uh, improvement in this season is that burnham is the captain and that does address some problems i have with michael burnham because in the other star trek shows the captain makes sense to have everything pivot around because they're the captain and um they're not in a place where they have to artificially construct like well michael's the main character so we need everything to revolve around her even though she's not the captain now that she's just the captain some of that kind of goes away it's like well 
it makes a lot more sense now that she's at the center of everything because she's the captain of the ship during this mission. She can't get rid of all like the, you know, um, universal savior baggage just because we've had three seasons of it. But just the fact that she's now the captain definitely mitigates some of this problem with just like, why is, why is all of this revolving around her? Like sure. now it's like, Oh, she's the captain. Like it, it just makes a lot more sense. So, um, and it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, honestly, she should have been here from the get go. Um, they could have avoided half this. How do we make Michael so important to the narrative? <laughs> Is Burnham still the same person in season four? Yeah, more or less. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a, like I said, it doesn't alleviate all the problems. Um, there's still lots of grandiose speeches about we're Starfleet. Um, and... <laughs> But they, you know, but they do some <laughs> things with because, like in the first episode, the Federation president comes aboard to observe this mission, um, and then later it's revealed that um, they're about to introduce a new spore drive, like reinvert, like reverse engineered from Discovery into the whole fleet now, so like more ships can start using it, and uh, Burnham's being considered to be become the captain of a new ship, uh, the uh, Voyager, the new Voyager. Um, oh, but, really? Um, <laughs> uh, but the Federation, I don't know, um, can't escape the, it. You, nope. can't escape it. uh, but the Federation president isn't confident about, uh, Burnham. Cause they're like, you're frankly, you're kind of reckless and you're this, this insatiable need you have to make sure everyone comes home is actually dangerous. Hmm. Um, and so throughout the whole season, like a lot of, uh, Burnham stuff is actually a lot of scenes with the Federation president and them trying to like finds this kind of more middle ground where kind of interesting so she doesn't so you're like you're taking too much upon yourself captain like you need to trust your crew more uh which is also refreshing like i mean she's still space jesus like they can't get away from it because they've just they're too in they're too deep into it but yeah. it does help considerably to have her just now a captain trying to figure out being a captain for sure that's that's good to hear but at the same time, <clears throat> I find it frustrating because I think the way that they started the show was so interesting to me. Like similar to Voyager, I think it was a really good idea that they just kind of got away from them because the fact that she was had been had essentially accidentally started that war and then got base uh, would she get busted down to a private or was she actually in the brig or something I she was in jail prison yeah, yeah prison yeah. she was in prison like why that's... did they let her out to do to do what mission to just do i don't remember it was lorca who got her aboard for his oh that's right yeah. nefarious yeah. schemes yeah. Yeah. like that's such an interesting setup for a character on a star trek show but they just you know dumped all that stuff out the window well, I mean, Jaren, would you say that? I mean, my my issue with Discovery has always been that it doesn't know what it's talking about, really. Like, it's, <laughs> it's just a show that is like just talking for talking's sake. Does yeah. it, does anything change in season four, or is it still just a lot of talking? For and when I say that, I just mean it's like, um, I think it's a show that is trying to be about something, and it's trying to be sort of like forward looking. But it's a, it's attempts at doing it make it seem like it's almost like retrograde in that sense, and that the, the things that they talk about never feel like they naturally come of any kind of story. It's not a show built around examination of something. It's about sort of saying what you think, and then everyone just goes, "Yeah, that's a good point," and then they walk on to the next thing. D d does that change, or is there any kind of, or is that still just discovery? Uh, yeah. I mean, I've said yes or no, if, uh, yes and no a few times, but cause sorry, uh, I, sorry to interrupt, but I was reading some bullshit <laughs> blog, Star Trek blog thing that had Frakes, who's directing in season five. He had some quote that was kind of seemed like he was throwing a little bit of, he had some line about like the studio said to move away from the emo mentality of season four and that they wanted to get back to more like an action spectacle. And I think that Discovery was not, season four was not the only uh, emotional discovery season so and would you say that season four is that original thing that i hated particularly or is there something different about it i i wouldn't say there's anything particularly different like i said i do think there are some interesting ideas in the season that i haven't seen in the last couple seasons um um i agree with you in the sense that like on on a on on a large level and on a detailed level like this is a show that doesn't know 
like what it's about. And of when I have to explain a Star Trek series to someone, most of them I can explain with like in a sentence. Voyager's the one where they're lost in space. D Space Nine's about people on a space station and the universe comes to them. They all have like a, an identity you can get to real quick. When I come to discovery, it's like, how, how do you describe discovery in a sentence to someone? It seems like the show has fundamentally not had a strong identity as to what it is. It's all over the place. And it's kind of become this like, well, okay, this is going to be the one that really leans into the more progressive elements um, and kind of more of like the thematic messaging that Star Trek is famous for. Like that's kind of in retrospect, kind of what it became. The single biggest problem of the show, even with some of these really interesting ideas, because there are there are things in this season I genuinely liked. I'm like, that is interesting and this is interesting. But the dialogue is atrociously bad. Mm-hmm. Um it it is uh they it it is literally it, it it fluctuates going from exposition just constantly there's so much plot happening so they're constantly talking about the plot and reminding you what the plot is right. just making sure like my oh, favorite, plot stuff my favorite stuff <laughs> so good you know uh Star Trek can least, be complicated it's good to just have the characters tell you exactly what's happened um, it's kind of miraculous that D Space Nine somehow did not fall too much into this with as much plot as it ends up having. But man, they're just constantly talking about the plot. It's like, like as if they're talking about where the pieces on the board are at any given time. Uh, but then they're also like weaving that in between the thematic messaging with no subtlety. It's just a lot of scenes where they're literally speaking to the character arcs and the themes. And it's like, and no and, and then it's interspersed with like you know discovery spinning its wheel and, and just crazy like visual nonsense and then yeah. like weird marvel quips and during this i'm like no one no one speaks like this no one speaks like this so really selling the, it here man i'm i'm so, I'm so excited to we're be not back. going back clay we're not going back so what's the We've jumped 300,000 years into the future and we can't go back, Wes. Is the, is the space cloud theme just the inclusivity thing of bringing people together? Is that the, the point of the season? Um, what is the space cloud threatening to do? Destroy planets and that's the extent of it? Yeah, so there is... Th- these anomalies kind of just randomly show up and... I mean, it's interesting, like, you know, as far as like a space mystery goes, you know, which aren't the most, you know, exciting things, but, you know, there's like, wow, this like dark matter anomaly, it's like, it's moving and changing course. It's like, you know, this is, we don't know exact, like, we're not exactly sure what this is, but we can assume that there's probably some intelligence behind it. (laughs) So the whole first half is them trying to figure out. Unlike this show, but (laughs) (laughs) No. (laughs) No. Um, the whole so the whole first half is them trying to figure out kind of what this thing is while oh, dealing with the ramifications of like um, books, planets uh, being destroyed, and like other planets starting to like explode. Is it the goddamn Borg? <laughs> no, 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 no. The at what at what point in season four did everyone who watched it think it was the Borg? <laughs> no, the second episode. Did they say something like, um, "This is not relevant." <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just goes, I know who that is. I mean, they they there's a scene or two where they're like, who could this be? It's like, is it the Q? It's like, nah, we haven't seen them in like 500 years. And like the Metrons haven't claimed anything. I'm like, you're just going through, to, they're just like name checking all like the, remember this random super intelligent Star Trek encyclopedia. <laughs> I could just flip through that and be like, these yeah, are I mean, the big Gorgons. What else is it for? Is it, is it the Organians? Could it be Trelane? Um, <laughs> it just turns out to be a new thing. It's no, it's nothing. Yes, it, it it is a new thing, and I I do actually like what it becomes. Um, they don't do enough with it. I wish, because like I said, the first half of the is trying to figure out what the DMA anomaly is. I wish they had figured that out, that a little sooner and gotten more into like what's causing it. And so yeah. they designate them species ten C. They're an extra galactic species. Um, with, um, really into Voyager territory here with your numbers and letters species. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an interesting species choice. eight four seven two. Um, what is it? The D seven. Remember that goddamn moment in the show with the oh yeah, battle <laughs> the, the greatest ship ever designed. <laughs> Behold the D seven battle cruiser. <laughs> that was that was a that was a strong 
strong <laughs> ones. So they're extra, they're extra galactular or whatever. But, so they're from our universe, but they're just very far away. Is that how I'm supposed to interpret that? They live in extra galactic space. They do not. They are initially from like a rogue planetoid that just exists outside of any galaxy. They're not from okay. any particular galaxy. They're from dark space or whatever you want to call it. Um, so the second half of the season starts, and especially in the last few episodes, it becomes basically Star Trek's take on the film Arrival. If you have seen Arrival, yeah, I saw a com- I saw a comment in the YouTube comments about it becomes about communication. It was like, it sounds like I'd rather just be watching Arrival than than whatever this is going to turn into. Please, please watch Arrival. Um, oh, we have. Yeah, it's on Patreon, <laughs> Patreon.com. While you're listening to our coverage of Star Trek uh, yes. Discovery season five, you can listen to Arrival too. <laughs> um. And it's in, like, I feel like this could have been a really interesting idea. They just, it's just more about the mystery box than anything. Like, there are some interesting ideas just in how they communicate. Like, they, there are these, there are these giant, they look like um, they're huge and they look like almost like oh, it is giant lot. kind of like floating balloon neurons, all kind of telepathically linked together um they they are a hive mind um so yeah, they are the borg they are the borg but benevolent borg um, <laughs> the co- the, what do they collect the collective the borg borg uh what is jurati cooperative the borg cooperative, cooperative. The borg yeah. cooperative yeah. yes yeah <laughs> um the borg they <laughs> they communicate through emitting hydrocarbons um essentially pheromones that are tied yeah. to particular um, like emotional states and so they kind of have to decipher a whole language of like these hydrocarbons it is a rival it it is it is like there's even like kind of like they kind of like jiggle and like also <laughs> send like flashing lights you know at them and it's like this is definitely a rival um but there are also times where it kind of feels like star trek the motion picture like there are a few times where it went into that kind of vibe where it's like they're flying through this long thing and there's this kind of like oh boy we've gone off the map we don't know where we are i'm like i i, I do appreciate that idea like it does feel very star trek and they're like we don't know what we found and that does kind of feel exciting that's fun but they just don't do much with it uh like they commun- they end up communicating with them um these species 10 c like they lost their home planet so they've now created this giant hyper field that they exist in which is also kind of an interesting idea they don't exist on a planet they're just in this field out Mm -hmm. in space and the whole reason why these planets are exploding is they're essentially mining planets for this uh substance they need to fuel um, their hyper field they just have no concept that there are intelligent beings living on the planet um so, so they just they, have to explain what's going on. Our relationship to ants, basically. We just yeah. don't know about So them. they're Galactus? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I Specifically mean, from the Fantastic Four movie where Galactus <laughs> was a giant cloud? <laughs> I mean, I mean, they're, they are like, you, they, you see them as like a physical being. They, they just live in this field like Galactus. of energy. Yeah, like, okay, he's, got yeah, a little, like, he's got a little helmet. Yeah, <laughs> purple helmet. Uh, no helmets, alas. No helmets, alas. Thank you, Brandon, for your uh, for you. your donation to cover this ten Australian dollars. Don't know what that is. We'll have to ask the arrival aliens, and they'll let us know. But thank you very much for your generosity, and thank you for supporting us for what like ten years now at this point. <laughs> um, imagine getting this reveal about ten C after ten hours of painful emoting from the main cast. So this is all revealed in the. the I imagine this. What was the little Ceruling? His name, the screaming oh, guy. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, I can't remember his name. He is jettisoned in like the first episode. Like I didn't Ceru- even realize he was still. I oh, thought I thought he, he might have been dead. <laughs> no, because at the end of season three, Saru st- stays on on Kelpia to oh, kind right. of like mentor and help him. Oh, but that's like right. in the first episode, he's like, "No, I'm good. I'm good, bro. Thanks for helping me get over my stuff." And then oh, Saru really? just rejoins the ship, still as a captain, but becomes first officer. So. It Sakal. is fun. His name yeah. is a call. Sorry. Yep. There you go. I had to find that. It's a it's a fun dynamic seeing Burnham as like captain and Saru as first officer. Um, it is strange that they're both captains, but is that that's how she becomes captain, right? Saru leaves. Yeah. It's clearly all orchestrated just to find some convoluted way to get her in the captain's chair and then bring him back as the sure. first officer. <laughs> so man, have you ever like this show is so much 
just backflipping through decisions that they should have made the first time. It's just insane to me. Yep. Like that that whole first season was them basically backflipping and into the second season. Back would you backflipping say? through uh we probably should have set this 300,000 years <laughs> in the future instead of before <laughs> everything. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm all I'm hazy on the details of the first season about what they changed from um who's the original creator? The oh, famous Fuller. Ryan Fuller. Fuller. Yeah. yeah, like I I I forget what they changed there. I I remember things like the Klingon uh coffin ship being his idea and stuff like that which mm-hmm. is kind of i i think i still like the first season the most in retrospect actually i kind of like their klingon take i thought that that was kind of original um the plot got kind of crazy but anyway moving into season five what are the things that we have to know what is there anything <laughs> that we have to know about this going into season five burnham's captain i understand that burnham's still, cap- still in the future yeah, so there's a, probably a few character things. Um, is there a new be- character? Is there any? I know book. <clears throat> I know the, um, the like gender free Adira person. Adira, yeah. Is there anyone else that added? Um, it's it's more or less the same. There are a few new recurring characters that my guess will certainly be in, um, season five. Um, the biggest thing with Burnham, like I said, a lot of her stuff is with the Federation president, uh, president Rallick. She'll most likely be in the, the next season. She's a huge part of, um, this season. I wish they would do more with her. Like one of the things that's so frustrating about the show to me is that like the, the future they're envisioning in the 32nd century is just incredibly unimaginative. Um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and but they 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 flirt with some interesting ideas i'm like this sh- oh so i'm sorry to interrupt i i noticed a comment gray is gone i could not remember the other character adira is gray oh, character. yeah yeah speaking to Trill? like speaking to the flip flopping yes that was Trill, right? yes so flipping to the like the flip flop because they kill gray in oh. gray's first episode in season three because because then right. but then gray is living in like oh, Adi- in head. adira's right, yeah, yeah. uh head I, 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 some of the messaging comes across as some of the optics are really weird because Adira reveals that Gray is living as like a consciousness in them. Um, and I'm like, I feel like they're trying to make some sort of analogy or metaphor about, I don't know, being a non, I, that's, I'm not sure what they're making an analogy about because I'm like, I, on some level, they're trying to speak to either like a gender fluid or a trans or a non-binary thing. But I'm like, but I'm not exactly sure what the message is because it's like there's a non-binary person who has a trans person living in them as a separate person. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like, as far as I'm aware, what you know, talking with trans people or um, like this is not how it is like that you just feel um the gender in you it's not some separate person living within you but then adira kind of says oh gray is living with inside of me uh and then the other characters are like okay great we believe you but then everyone kind of talks in this in this way it's almost like when you talk to a kid who has an imaginary friend and everyone is just like (laughs) oh would blah 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 like t2 yeah and i'm like the optics of this i feel like are really really i'm like I, i'm not sure what you're speaking to here like but i don't mean, feel like, like this is anyone's experience <laughs> like in the first season where they're like we have such a great loving gay relationship oh really how long does that last until we brutally murder one of them in the third they, they brushed their teeth together and it was the it was the most heartwarming scene i've ever seen it's, before in my life it's so like the you had Captain- is the doctor still around is- What's his name? Culver. Is Culver's still there. Still there. Okay. Um, he's kind of he does a lot more uh, like therapist psychiatry stuff, and that's yeah, what a lot of because they realized they had two doctors because there's that black female doctor that was. But always he's there to... but he's still the chief medical officer, and she's barely in it. But oh, he's now just oh. also the therapist. Are they still um, a couple? Sure. Those two, Stamets and Culver. I, I feel like he, they broke up. No? They are they are still a couple. Oh. Um, they broke Stamets up for a while, I think. Did, oh, was I it the death, or did they break up outside of that? No, there was the death, and then they were kind of separate for a while, and then they come back. Um, okay. So it might as well nothing have happened. It's so weird. Like, 
the the show had Giorgio, like the first like Asian woman captain, killed her in the second episode. Then went out of their way to bring back an evil version. They had Star Trek's first gay couple killed him. Then found this weird way to bring him back. Mm. And then they had Star Trek's first non-binary and trans characters instantly killed the trans character. And then I have to come up with this weird thing to bring them. I'm like, yeah. what, what are you? What doing happened to here? Gray? Did the DMZ kill Gray or whatever this thing is called? <laughs> no, because he walk into the DMZ or whatever his the DMZ. Is. No, because when they show Gray dying in season three, it's like a it's something that's already happened. It's like a oh, like, you don't even like, see it. it's a flashback. Well, what's, it's, a, what's, it's a flashback because because Adira goes into like the trill memory pools or whatever, right? And that's how they're kind of exploring some of like the flashback with Gray. But then I can't remember exactly what happened. But then somehow Gray was Gray alive at the end of season three, inside Adira as oh. like a consciousness. So is Gray in season four? Yes. Um, so the first half of season four, they are trying to find a way to essentially extract gray out of adira oh here we go yeah i think point sure. is coming up with this they they got yeah. a picard that would body. be let's let's do it <laughs> yep um and then and then uh, they kind of just peace out for like once they get their body back and then they're like i need to go live my life and then gray pieces out for the rest of the season and then adira just kind of great. just hangs out with stamets for the rest of the season <laughs> great great endings for great characters <laughs> Greg comes back to life in season four and leaves. Yep, that that is exactly what happens. Well, cool. I'm glad I'm glad we're not watching season four. I think we'll just we'll go out with the. I'm interested in season five because apparently they shot it and then realized it got canceled and they had to reshoot the ending for oh, it. Interesting. So um, they had produced it, not knowing it was going to be the finale, and then it became that way. So like. Who's Zora? Yeah, we haven't gotten to Zora yet. This is the this is probably the single biggest thing, and one of my favorite things they did in the season. Do you remember the not short? As big, not as good as the Gorons. The, no. the Zora, the uh, the Zelda <laughs> race. That's all I know that the Zora and the Gorons. Are. Um, do you remember? Did you guys see when in that brief little time they were doing short tracks? Uh, they did one that was set way in the future on like oh, yeah. an abandoned oh, the discovery. The best one. Yeah. Yeah. That was the best one. Yeah. Uh, and there's the, with a the character that we semi racistly were wondering if it was book, right? Was that, that was right. like the thing, yes. <laughs> but it's not book. It's, just it's, some it's other not, guy that would have made too much sense. It would have made too much sense. Yeah. Um. So this is this. So they had, they've been hinting at the, because there was the sphere data in season two that it got yeah, integrated into the important. ship. Because I, I remember the ship was God, starting to become so a character, <laughs> right? Like it was starting to have like the thoughts about opinions about things. Yeah. So Zora is the ship's intelligence and does become a full fledged character in the fourth season. And it is one of the big plot lines of the fourth season where they kind of have to like determine its status and what it wants. Um, and it is kind of interesting. Like, it does it in its discovery way, so it it doesn't just say what it wants. It kind of like will do something, and they have to infer what it wants. Yeah, well, it's it's they're playing with this idea of like what would it be like? You know, it's one thing to be like a baby and slowly come together in consciousness, but it's interesting to see this AI kind of like a person. Like the whole season is undergoing this existential crisis. It's like what what am i and it is interesting like it's a it's a unique take on ai it's not evil like there are a couple of episodes where like how much can we trust this thing um it doesn't and, turn into giant tentacles like in season two for, fortunately not um does it just like not allow the ship to jump at certain points or like what what is, what do they do with it like there there is an episode i think it's one of the more interesting episodes they have to go into this negative like field to uh, figure out what the dma is so about halfway through the season and zora this all sounds like yep filling out your taxes it, yeah no it, it yes i'm not saying you should watch it <laughs> i want the refund it's worth it for the refund if I but end you know, up there with a, a credit, I'm, I'm excited. You have to apply for the Zora grant to get the refund. Yeah, that's <laughs> there, the government needs to offer me a free version of Paramount Plus <laughs> so that I don't have to pay TurboTax dollars to watch this fucking show. That's really what it comes down to. Um, there are some interesting... If you don't get sent a DM10 by your employer by the end of January, <laughs> you need to contact them. <laughs> 
we're rapidly uh, approaching the 15th too so it's good that we streamed this uh just for the people who are need to make their to make, need to make their contributions since the last year's dmz if you, if you need uh, help with your taxes, you can sign up for the Patreon. That's fine. The, that's, that's a productive the, the, field. The, 10C, <laughs> the, t the, the DMA 10C level. <laughs> Thank you for supporting the show. Uh, there are some interesting ideas they explore. It's like when they enter this negative field, like Zora doesn't have any sensors. So from their point of view, it feels like, um, like they've gone numb and they're paralyzed. Mm -hmm. And they feel like fear because of it. It's like, imagine if you just lost all of your senses and couldn't sense anything. That's kind of fun. Um, and so they kind of have to like talk to it to help like- how, is, it, is it like a character? Does it like yeah, yes. write text on a screen or something? No, she speaks to him. Oh, it speaks. Cool. Like, and she's constantly like, it's interesting <laughs> because like she'll be, and they'll cut between scenes and they'll like Burnham, Saru, whoever, like they're talking about the plot and, and Zora will be there. Captain, we, I think we can also do this. And then they'll cut away to a scene with like uh, Culper, uh, Dr. Culper in the med bay. And he is also at the same time talking to Zora and it's completely because Zora is just kind of everywhere and can sure. have multiple conversations and things all happening at the same time. Um, Who falls in love with Zora? Yeah. Is there a Harry Kim on the ship to fall in love with Zora? Not yet, fortunately. Yeah. Not yet. It's coming. See... It's got to be coming. <laughs> well, that's see... what the that's what the short is. Is she falls in love with the guy who oh, comes aboard the, the ship? Yeah, Does true. he leave at the end of the short? Is that how it works? Yeah. He, he takes I, off, right? Yeah, yeah, he takes off. Yeah. That was a Chabon script. It, was, it wasn't that bad. And then he, I don't know what the hell happened. He felt he started writing Picard. Um, has anyone seen his new series on Showtime? Is that any good? I don't know what it is. I think it's, I think it's based on a book that him and his wife. Oh, it's based like. on his own book. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't read the book. I know it's really good. Um, oh God, what is it called? It's a Pulitzer Prize winner. So it's not the right. Cavalier one. It's not Cavalier and Clay, is it? I, th I thought it was yeah, a, that's a the different. Only one I know. That's the one that I know of him, but I, I don't know if it's that or something else for the, for the TV show. Um, I, then I'm not sure. I thought that maybe they were doing an adaptation of that, but I can't remember. I think there is an ad. I don't think he did it though. I, th I, I would think, but, um, anyway, I'm getting distracted. The, um, the reason I brought him up, what the hell did I bring him up? Zora. That Zora. Short. Oh, right. I, this is a very tangential thing. Have you guys seen the, the new Mario brothers movie? Mm -hmm. Did no? Michael Chabon write it? <laughs> <laughs> Bullet he, no, he me. voices Mario. <laughs> 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 but they have a um it was actually it was much better than I expected it to be. Um quick review is that it's a it's a movie that has a whole bunch of shit that you have to reference in it and they do a B plus job of naturally bringing in all the references to stuff. Like so it says it it works in that way. It's like it's kind of cute and like when like the spiky shell shows up, you're like, oh, that's kind of a clever use of the spiky shell and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but they had a, they have a little character in it that's very funny. That's like, I don't know what the character is from the game, but it's like this little glowing star thing. And it, it talks in this very kitty kind of like, it sounds like it's stoned. It's kind of like, la, 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 la. But it says very morose stuff. Like it says like in this insane world, all only the sane are considered crazy and stuff like that. And it says in the background, <laughs> I kind of want Zora to be like that, but I don't think Zora is anything like that. Um, I mean, kind of like Zora is very kind of existential and she does speak in this kind of, um, there's this kind of like wistful, like longing kind of care, like quality to her. Yeah. She, uh, it's int like I'm like honestly, this is something that that should have happened on Star Trek years ago. Like the computer, they're talking to the computer, and it's like working. You know, in a hundred years, it's still that. I'm like, that's kind of where we are now. It's like, honestly, we should be seeing really intelligent computers uh, on Star right. Trek. So yeah. that does feel like a natural progress. I'm like, yeah, we should actually have been here a long time ago. Like you can just talk to the computer like a real person. But it doesn't have a. Is it? Is it too? Is it? Does it? Does it not understand the, the current? Did it come out too soon for the current debate about AI to be meaningful to it? Uh, I don't think so. Like, and I would hope for um, season five they would continue to explore some more, more things with AI. It's just nice to because there's so much doom and gloom about AI. You know, not unnecessarily so, of course, but it's nice to uh, have Zora be kind of a counterpoint. 
But isn't to my, it. my memory of it is that it's not an AI though. It's like a living planet, right? That they download onto the, the ship. Uh, because it's 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 the sphere. It's the accumulation of the sphere data, which is like thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years of like galactic history that yeah. has now kind of like interfaced with like discovery systems and like through this act. Oh, it, it's like a new thing. Okay, it kind of like becomes this whole new entity. Um, so yes, it is like an AI. I don't mean to interrupt, but this is potentially a good idea. A uh, question from Jed here is: so we'll, we'll release release Picard season three on YouTube. Live long and prosper. This could be a way to have a new podcast on the main yeah, feed. Put that on the so main feed. Yeah. I'll put that on the main feed as we're covering Discovery. So I, I completely forgot we didn't have Picard season three out on YouTube yet. So we will put that out starting next week, I guess, on the main feed. And if you're not listening to Discovery, that's what you got. So thank you, Jet. Sorry. Clay, any final questions about this this thing before we move into Discovery? Um are there any uniform updates I need to know about? <laughs> <clears throat> um, they are different. Um, I don't know how crazy I am about them. They're not wearing the McDonald's uniforms anymore, right? It's a it, it is a more colorful variation of that. It's 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 better. It's not great. I I I didn't hate their their blue uniforms. Like I I, I, I like the like, blue ones. Yeah. Are we talking feel, about like season one and two? Those yeah. Early uniforms? I feel like that was a good. As much as I love the multicolored Star Trek, I it was nice to get something a little. It's such a holdover of like that is literally because they had to sell color TVs with the original show. Right. So yeah. and they're still kind of holding on to it. So I I did I still like, think their their trim was too subtle in that. Like their their trim mm -hmm. is different colored, mm -hmm. right? To describe like what their role is. And it, yeah. I think I watched half that season before someone commented saying that that was the case. And I was like, Oh, I guess they are kind of different colors, but it, it's too subtle. Well, I they think. were trying to walk the line between Enterprise, right? Where it was supposed yeah, to be yeah. kind of similar to enterprise but a little bit more closer to the future stuff they stay they hit it out of the park with the strange new worlds uniforms yeah. those are those are the star trek uniforms of this yeah. era just yeah. just wear them or i guess in the future now i don't know what they're wearing but uh, so they're still wearing the same blue things that no 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 now they're all wearing different colored shirts oh uh um, there was there was one i don't know how long it lasted where they were when i said the mcdonald's uniforms they were like gray they were all uniform gray with red with colored stripes oh, on yeah. them oh, and yeah. they look like right. mcdonald's costumes from the 70s <laughs> <laughs> yeah they kind of look they're kind of variants of that now but and now the shirts are all colored depending on what okay. department you're in um, do they still have the terrible date delta that i hate where it's just looks like a silver blob on their chest um it's the season th whatever the season three okay. one yeah That's it is like the kind yeah. of blob one yeah 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 um there, any some, promotion oh sorry just had to say, i think it's just burnham right is anyone else in a different situation everyone kind of in the same spot burnham still cap uh, is captain saru is captain but first officer um, how is the redhead dealing with her ptsd from that time she had to fly hard yeah the, is she still around um she flies the, the fucking ship jaren oh oh uh, cyborg yeah. oh, the, yeah, the cyborg bridge guy. crew uh, yeah they're such minor characters i forget right <laughs> They're um, all still there. They're, they're all, still, all still there. They all get little things to do. Nothing significant. Um, one big notable thing that I'm sure they'll address in season five for book. So book becomes a semi the semi antagonist in the back half oh, all right. of That's the fun. season because they realize there's an intelligent species behind all this, and so they summon like the Federation Council or and or and um um like Detmer. neighboring allies sorry, sorry. detmer the, yes the, the and a woshu kun um, they, they tell me bryce left the show he was the tactical officer i think he's he was the, communications, communications i think was bryce clearly indispensable yeah <laughs> what is in is that his first name or his last name is that, I, I, I think <laughs> it's his last name like lieutenant bryce i think was his name um yeah, so they're trying to determine, it's like, should we talk to this thing or should we do, initiate like a first strike against this? So a lot of the conflict, especially mm -hmm. in the middle, is trying to like, do we attack this thing because it's destroying entire planets or do we try to make diplomacy with it? And especially since Book lost his whole planet, he's like, we we should take it out now. Like, who knows what it's going to strike next? And other like people are like, yeah, actually, we probably should just take it out now. Sure. Uh, but then Burnham and others are like, well, we should... if 
we should try to talk to it and figure out what's going on here. So he kind of goes rogue with like a rogue scientist for like the back half of the season. And so like him and uh, Burnham are in conflict with each other, which is interesting. Um, in the end, like, you know, they make amends and book finds redemption and they communicate with it all. And, you know, happy ending. Um, let's Stamets has very little to do this season. Almost nothing happens with Stamets. He's just there to like bounce stuff off of Culber and like Adira and gray and Tignataro, who shows up still like three episodes yeah, a season. There, yeah. Um, Tilly, I forgot until someone mentioned on the thing that David Cronenberg is on this show. Yeah, he's he, what is he? he's like the admiral he, of Starfleet or something. He's right? still. It, I'm not sure what he is. He's some sort it's of like a scientist, sort of maybe therapist or something. Yeah, yeah. Scientist, but he, yeah. he 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 does therapy. He also determines <laughs> if Zora is AI. He also like may or may not be Section Thirty One and secretly run. Like who knows what. He's such an undefined character. He's fun. He's yeah. such an undefined character. Um, Tilly goes off to do Starfleet Academy, but you do see her She's back. Um, in the in the and the at the end. Um, Culper was mostly trying to deal with like how to be a therapist for people when he's dealing with his own stuff. Um, oh, and Zora is now there. That's probably the single biggest thing in terms of the cast. Is Zora is Zora. now like a full fledged. Right. um character oh and earth is now in the in, the, in like the last scene earth joins the federation, the federation because Sweet. of what a great this is the this is the controversial scene where stacy abram shows up um, oh i thought we'd seen that that's not know, season three that's season, season four, four. The, it's see it's the very last scene of season four where she yeah. she's uh shows up and she's the president of earth and she kind of shows up it's like yes we would more than anything love to be uh, a member of the federation it's like oh well that was that was nice that scene like <laughs> i <pretty> i <laughs> i i i know that's it's a controversial scene particularly for her casting mm -hmm. and i'm like i don't necessarily mind that it's stacy abrams i know i'm sure if like ted cruz showed up i probably maybe had would have had a different reaction but I'm like, because he's, he's, I know. But well, I like, mean, if they had Stacey Abrams show up and deny the election results of the federation election <laughs> would have been on par. It would have been on par for her. Um, it's like, I'm like, like, she's a Star Trek fan. I'm like, look. They do that shit all the time. If, if the scene she's in is good and interesting, honestly, it doesn't matter. Like, she gets to be in it. But the scene she is in is so bad. And it's the, it's the note that the season ends off of like they save the day 10 C they make contact. And then, you know, Michael gives one of those like 10 minute monologues while you're watching scenes of like people slowly mm -hmm. walking and like patting each other on the back. It's like togetherness, love, like communication yeah. like that. And like, so she spends 10 minutes talking to the themes of what you've just spent. And, but every character has been speaking to the themes, every episode and every scene. And then she gives a 10 minute recap on what the themes are. You're like, great. And then Stacey Abrams shows up as president of earth to have a little scene with Michael Burnham, where they then again, literally say gotcha. what the themes of what we learned this season on Star Trek, where I'm like, you literally just spent 10 minutes in a voiceover talking about it. And now we're having a scene talking so, about it. With a TikTok generation, I need gotcha. constant reminders about what exactly has. I'll tell been. you <laughs> from what I'm hearing, <clears throat> if you want my uh, completely uninformed take on what they did wrong in season four, because I'm more than happy to give that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think earth should have been basically the, the, uh chronos analog earth should have been the the uh the the one who doesn't want to join starfleet and is kind of shitty about it oh yeah i think that would have been really cool i would have been way more interesting like a whole season trying to like get either earth and the federation and they don't want to and they're yeah. at odds with the federation i agree as much as like some of the arrival stuff star trek doing its taken arrival is potentially interesting it doesn't really end up being interesting so what's 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 more of a of a ham-fisted awful uh um take the picard season two let's go back to tomorrow and talk about how awful <laughs> the things of today are or everybody blowing each other at the end of this fourth season of discovery i i i'm gonna be honest i will take discovery over picard every single time because at the very least like there is an attempt to do something new and interesting it's not good yeah 
Um, and there are some like I can at least latch on to like, okay, you know, Zora, what they're doing here, that's kind of interesting. And this thing is interesting. I'm like, there are if if I could, if someone said to me, Jaron, we're gonna get rid of all the other Star Treks and and one show is gonna be the best possible version it could be. I'm like, I would want mm -hmm. Discovery to yeah. be like the one show that really worked out and we didn't get all these other shows. I I still genuinely wish that was the case. I wouldn't disagree with that. Um because Picard, Picard season two is the still the worst season of Star Trek or any other show I feel like I've ever watched. Like, because I'm not at the very least, I can tell you what the themes of Discovery were with them because they, as for as much as they talk about, it, I'm like, and that's fine. I'm still not exactly sure what the themes of. There was a lot of like, yeah, the past was bad, right? Mm -hmm. And like, you got to get past your trauma or something and so you're, you're telling me in season four of discovery nobody drives a 2014 toyota suburban <laughs> <laughs> crashes it into sir patrick stewart or <laughs> oh no there was there was global warming and there was seven seven kind of wanted to be there and kind of didn't want to be there and then the border crisis aging, the border crisis it, it intermixed intermixed with weird star trek lore deep dives ah ah uh, i remember uh the original enterprise uh gary seven from that one episode of assignment That's earth that. and, and guinan <laughs> and, and q and global warming and uh, uh trauma like that's what that season was as long as Ten there's no episodes borg. of it as long as there's no borg i'll do anything sir, sir patrick said <laughs> yeah then Who's... all three all three seasons have borg what in it. what if my mother dies horribly by hanging <laughs> and, I and we we see the whole we, thing we see the whole thing we see it all i now imagine her as an old lady offering me tea like in that one episode from season one but, you know, I... but hanging from the neck until she's dead See, here's the uh, the thing for me about Picard versus Dis Discovery is that um, Picard's badness has, in retrospect, a kind of fun to it. There's like a there's like a stupidity that's kind of like endearing to Picard, and I think I because I we were talking on the Discord the other day about like what our favorite run of the podcast was, and people seem to like Picard season two. And I was listening to some of them recently. I was like, oh, this was a good stretch of the the show. Um, I don't feel that discovery ever gets there because discovery mm. is so obsessed with itself that it, how would you say it? Discovery is too mopey and it doesn't take the swings that Picard season two took, which we're That's all fair. misses, but That's it's fair. like, at least you're enjoying watching a guy just, you're watching someone throw hundred mile heaters past this, this writing <laughs> staff and they can't make contact with the ball. And I, I that's the thing. My concern about going back to Discovery is that 10 minutes into the first season, the episode, I'll go, oh, my God, I remember what Discovery was like. And I'll, and I'll say that this isn't worth this isn't worth anything. Mm -hmm. um, the, again, the positive here is that I see the end of the tunnel and I'm like, they have to wrap this up. This is over. The show was canceled. Everyone is done with this at this point. And I, I don't know if that'll... Mm change anything for me but i mean i i didn't feel particularly excited about picard season three at the time that it was happening either so it's it's interesting like it you know i at a certain point i might have agreed with you and and if i'm honest discovery and picard are like it's not like one is appreciably like yeah yeah one is so much better or worse than the other i might have agreed with you but when i so when i'm doing star trek stories like and i'll be setting up like the little podcast studio um, for the guests that are going to be showing up, I'll just start. I'll, I'll 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 pull up random episodes from the entire franchise and I'll play them in the background. Anytime Picard or Discovery come up, it's been interesting. As like I'm just listening to it in the background, but especially like anything from Picard's season two or to a lesser extent the first season, I'm listening to it. I'm like, oh my god, this is this is terrible. Like. <laughs> Like it makes me just want to like what is it in Picard season one when they like listen to like the admonition they're just like ah like have yeah, yeah. to like kill themselves it's so bad that's what it's like I'm like oh my god like I can't I I can't believe how bad this is when I hear discovery it, it is kind of more of that like I just have to laugh at just how preposterous uh, 
at what yeah. I'm hearing. There's like all this like talky feely stuff. I'm just like, <laughs> and then like discovery just starts spinning its little thing and making a lot of woo woo noises. So I, I know in retrospect, as I've been listening to them in the background, granted discovery always is more interesting to listen to than Picard is because I'm like, oh. I'm not interested at all into what's happening there. Um, Interesting. Have yeah. they turned on any lights in season four? Or is it still very yeah. dark? Uh, <laughs> it's it's still pretty dark. It's also, pretty, how many dark? How many people uh, call someone a cocksucker and then slit their throat horribly, <laughs> and spraying blood everywhere? Not, not enough. <clears throat> not that, that damn the material. Not not damn. every show's character Clay is improved if, by slitting its throat, as to uh, to quote a better show. Um. Let's see. Anything? Anything else about this? Oh, so I guess Clay. What are you thinking about season five? Do you have any quick thoughts about uh, what this means for you? Know, for you know, it's been a while person? since I've it's been a while <laughs> since I've said this, but I feel like I say it every time we do one of these. I'm going in optimistic, hoping that I will not fool want me to once. Reject. It's the <laughs> only way I can do it. It's the only way I can do it. I'm looking forward to watching the first episode and going. You know that actually wasn't that bad, and then mm. the next week going like, Ugh, they got me again. <laughs> Do you like Picard or Discovery better? I can't remember. I think you're a me? Discovery person, right? Uh, I think I had one of these trolley problem questions. Yeah. Uh, at some point, and I think honestly, I think... it's a tough call since I haven't watched Discovery in, in yeah. years. But I feel yeah. like. Yes, I think I like discovery more if yeah. if like is the word to use in this situation, which I'm not sure, sure if it is. Gun to head, you would rather watch a discovery episode. Yeah, I think I think like Jaron was saying, I think there is there is a much bigger upside to discovery than there is to Picard. Yeah. I think discovery just inherently has more potential and yeah. just that potential keeps making me check it out. Like season 3 of Picard, I was like, yeah, that it's better but that's all the show was ever going to be like right. here we are again but it's new and different i guess right picard uh, season three had one great episode which one is episode four of picard it's the one where they have to get out of like the nebula they're trapped in and like Riker uh, hurls the asteroid and that's pretty good <laughs> um and then space jellyfish are born in an yeah. ode to yeah. counter at far point Discovery is um, the worst thing I've ever sat down and watched. Picard is bad and disappointing. <laughs> Big difference. <laughs> you know, here's uh, this is me as an academic Star Trek fan, but also kind of an academic kind of storyteller. Like I will, I deep dive into all sorts of like things. Like it doesn't necessarily have to be good or bad to get my interest. The one thing that what Discovery and Picard have over Voyager is that I'm not bored when I'm watching Discovery. Um, maybe on some level, yes, but at least I'm like. It's a lot of like, what am I watching? But then trying to break down, like, what were they thinking with this show? With hmm. Voyager, it's just like, like you said, it's like we're, we're running out of things to talk about. I'm like, because there's not really much of anything there. I'm like, and to me, that's the cardinal sin. I would still rank Voyager as a better show overall, but man, like some of the, it's, it's not it's more interesting to talk about discovery and Picard. I'm like, in the end, I think what you're, if you can walk away talking about something, that's, it's a win in its own right. And Voyager yeah, just like, you, you got it. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, we'll see. My visceral memory is discovery making me very frustrated. Um, like in a way that Voyager is, is like, There's something, there's something, there's like, there's like the boring relationship of Voyager or something. And Discovery is like this relationship that's like, like driving you insane. <laughs> it's like, there's like, there's, there's like a reliable like spouse. And then there's one that's just like crashing the car into the wall or whatever. And it's like, the, I, I feel the difference is just that Voyager never really, Voyager never upsets me. It just is there, and I'm just yeah. watching it. But it's discovery, discovery actively is like, wow, this is, this is insane. <laughs> insane. <laughs> that they, that they discovery focus. is what gets the passion, though. Wes, it is. is what it is saying. what gets the passion. Discovery is a great fuck, but uh, Voyager is the one that you go home to. Well, it's just like people always talk about Voyager's comfort food. I'm like, 
I agree. Uh, comfort food is not interesting to talk about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, although, yeah, no, I, I can't disagree with that. Actually, I mean, when you I can't... feel like Voyager is comfort food made by like a hotel or something. Yeah, it's, it's a... like you know, there's macaroni and cheese that your mother makes, and then there's the stuff that you get <laughs> at the rest at the at, at the you know yeah. days in yes. on your second day of a conference. And it's like it's fine. <laughs> It's it is what it says on the box, but these are noodles, more. noodles and cheese sauce. But something has gone wrong in the making. All I right. mean, I feel like Wes, your reaction when you came on to Star Trek stories to talk about a man alone, like early D Space Nine, see like episode two, which it's like, and you're like, yeah, this is still a C minus, but you were so jazzed up to talk about it, and then at the end, you're like, this was great, this was invigorating. I'm like, oh man, you know, someone's in the middle of Voyager. <laughs> When they're saying a man alone C is invigorating. Hey, <laughs> as I think I've said before, Voyager might be the most successful of the shows because at a certain point you feel like you are just drifting through you're empty just, space. You're just on a, <laughs> along with the voyage. <laughs> I feel like I'm there. It's wild. <clears throat> the good, the bad, and the meh. Discovery is a cast that wants to be there while Patrick Stewart barely wants to get up alone, get up, let alone act. Voyager occasionally has. He's like ninety. Give him a break. <laughs> he is. He is. He's, he's incredibly old at this point. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, I guess we're done here. Jaron, thanks very much for coming on the show. You guys can check out Star Trek Stories. I'll try to put a link. The stream has already gone out. I don't know if I could put in a link, but it's called Star Trek Stories, and I think it shows up immediately if you search that in any podcatcher app. Yeah, all major podcast. Um, platform star trek stories um check it out i'm going to make one request of you guys if you guys decide like i don't know season five or six of voyager and it's like okay we need a we need another patreon break with a modern show um <laughs> I, i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna make a case for prodigy um i was considering I've, it yeah, yeah i've heard Prodigy's it's pretty good. it's legit the best show of all the modern stuff for me yeah. like easy hands down nothing else comes close Okay. Is it available it. to watch or did it get just it's it's time? currently on Netflix? It's currently oh, it okay. it's currently Netflix picked it up. Uh, they haven't aired the second season yet, but they will be. So the whole first season's there. Um is it done? Did they cancel it? They canceled it, but uh, then when Netflix picked it up, it kind of there is a potential that a third season could happen if Netflix decides they want gotcha. to do a third season. But I, I think as far as Paramount Plus is concerned, they're like yeah, yeah we're cool. not doing another one which is a shame because it's a hot take i know some people out there will disagree prodigies it might be the best star trek show since deep space nine hot take all right it doesn't have a, it doesn't have a lot of competition really nope nope <laughs> thanks for thanks for telling us the week before we graduated we went to the wrong college <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was considering we can do prodigy i think it's a reasonable it's a reasonable length and everything like that. And it, maybe it would be fun to do something that's actually uh, people consider to be a decent track show. Um, Jan Com. I think the goal guy? for this season five of Discovery West is we have to get enough clips that are effusive with praise that we get retweeted by the, the official Star Trek <laughs> thing. We become <laughs> shills for this, this show. <laughs> Such praise. That it, even though it's it's paywalled behind Patreon, they still just recommend putting this out there on their feed. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll we'll do. I am. I'm. I'm not excited for discovery. I'm excited to mix up the podcast stuff that we've been talking about. So I am. I am. Uh, oh, he's a little pig guy then, Jason Manzukas. Jenkins, the little pig man. He's a he's he's a tellerite. He's a tellerite, right? Like, yeah. Look at where's my Star Trek brain going? I call the Tellerite a pig man. Um, <laughs> he's a he's a sm he's a Tellerite small person. They also do eventually oh. make that distinction. He's a small person, but he is also Tellerite. Yeah. <laughs> tellerite is on top. Sure. I'm like I don't think they've ever done that. That's actually fairly novel. There should be a lot of that. <laughs> huh. Huh. <laughs> there's no there's no uh, there's just the um, multiculturalism crossing all bounds in in Prodigy. Yep. And yep. and we'll get to continue our intro and our. Uh, Janeway, because Janeway's in Prodigy, so that makes sense. Yeah, is Chakotay yep. in the first season of Prodigy? Yes, briefly. Yeah, in yeah. flashbacks, but oh, okay. it, it is part of the like the mystery of the ship. Um, but talking yes. all about how he wished he was there on January sixth or whatever he does now on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> was it just? I, I think it's just him 
reliving all the times that him and Janeway hooked up that you never see on Voyager or something like that. But no, <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's a kid show and I can't get around to it. He looks like a Neelix. That doesn't sound appealing. Always rewatch NY Enterprise Carpenter Street. We're done with Enterprise. We're done. All right, I guess that's it. So, yep, thanks everybody for listening. I'm excited to move on to Discovery just for the 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 lone thing of mixing it up and making the podcast a little bit different. It'll be on patreon.com slash the Penske file. Um, if you guys are interested, watch the final season of this show. If you're so inclined, I completely understand if you're not inclined to do that, if you cancel Paramount Plus and you're, you're done with it. Um, but Jared, thanks very much for coming on. Thank you for explaining season four to us. Of course, I'm I'm glad I could bring my expertise on discovery. I'm glad. <laughs> when, when when important topics need to be discussed, I will I will I will head over to you. Great. I won't watch the show, but I'll listen to you. That's all we ask. Jimmy. High praise. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, everybody. We are done. Support the show at patreon.com slash the Voyager is on a hiatus. We're going with Discovery, and then we'll do something exciting after that. Maybe we'll do Prodigy. Mix it up. See what's out there. Clay, what are you doing on Patreon? I just did uh, a video where I talked about Lives Throwing Copper, 311's self-titled album from 95 or whenever that came out, and then Blood Sugar Sex Magic from 1991. That's all on Patreon. We are uh, um, <clears throat> Rotten Horror Picture Show is covering Halloween franchise this year on on Patreon, and on the main feed we are about to have our 100th episode, yeah. which is going to be fun. We're going to be covering something uh, that's not on our list, and I guess it counts as a wild card. But we're going to be doing a question uh, Q and A thing as well, so that should be fun. Yeah, no one listened. Um... Or no one had any thoughts about the one cut of the dead for the the eighth greatest horror movie of all time apparently no one has seen it um <laughs> so that is something to bring up with the uh the rotten tomatoes tomatometer i've been thinking about that movie i still i think i still end up on the same you know how your opinion about a movie can change a couple days sure. later i don't i don't think my opinions really changed about that movie um it was good it was like a b plus i don't know if i'll ever rewatch it i suppose do you yeah. feel any different about it um no i feel about the same where it's like if i yeah i don't know if i would go out of my way i probably rewatch it if i was showing it to somebody else like it mm -hmm. came up this past weekend i was like oh you know it was actually pretty cool you should check this out but i mm -hmm. you know that's about it for me yeah that was fine if you like if you're deep into horror movies i guess that's one that you have to watch if but. someone was like do you want to watch this i would be like yeah sure you know i wouldn't object oh wow <laughs> okay be like do you have any discovery <laughs> <laughs> How many Star Trek Picard seasons I watch? No, it was uh, yeah, it was fine. It was. It, 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 I, I'm I'm more. I find my reaction to it interesting in that I thought it was very good, but it was like it's that weird division of like that was very good, but I don't know if I would even recommend it really. If someone if we if we were at the having to come up on Netflix about something to watch, be like I don't I don't think we need to to watch that one. All right, that's it. Change Ling. We are the George R. R. Martins of podcasters. We don't finish anything. It's technically, good. sorry. Technically, we did finish The Prisoner, but we, we lost the episode. <laughs> so, long story short, we didn't like the end of the remake. So there you go. Solo. Yeah, we should put a Patreon bar to finally finish Solo. <laughs> Enough money to pay Dave to watch it again. <clears throat> All right. Well, I got to get out of here, guys. That's fine. We're done. Guys, thank you very much. We will see you later.